In Power Query, our lives are much easier if we have promoted headers before we expand a column. However, the options to expand the header of a nested table don't exist in the user interface, which means often we expand the column and then try and deal with the cleanup issues. Well, in this video, we're looking at how we can promote the headers first to make our lives easier. So if you're ready, let's get started. So here we are in Excel. I'm going to go to Data, Get Data, from file from Excel workbook. In here, I'll select the file I want and then click import. So this loads the navigator window. I want to import everything from this workbook. So I'll select the entire folder and then click transform data. Okay, that's loaded everything into Excel. Let's click in the white space next to the word table. And then at the bottom, we get a preview of what we have inside of each of our tables. So you can see that we have columns one to six. We have our header row of March, June, September and December 2022. And then we have the values. But even though this is the header row, it's not been promoted to the header row. Let's look at the next table. It's exactly the same story, but we have different dates in that first row. And the same with our third table. Now the issue comes when we try and expand this column. We don't want to use the original column name as prefix, and then I'll click OK. So this data layout causes us some issues. First of all, we've stacked these columns on top of each other based on the column name of column one, two, three, four, five, six. However, the data in each column isn't the same. They relate to different time periods. So we don't want to stack them in that way. Not only that, but the other issue we have is that even if each of our data sets did have the same data in those columns, we can't really promote the first header row and then filter out those subsequent lines because our name column, but also our item kind and hidden columns are already promoted. So if we wanted to use any of those, it's quite common to use the name column. So if we wanted to use any of those, we would lose that column header. So we don't want to promote headers at this point. We want to promote the headers before we expand those columns. If our source file is an Excel workbook, the good news is the promoting headers inside each nested table is straightforward. If we look in the formula bar of the source step, we have our Excel.workbook function. The second argument currently shows null. This argument determines whether we should promote headers. If we change this value to true, and then commit that function. If we now look inside any of those tables, you'll see that our headers have been promoted. So I'm going to select name and data, right click, remove other columns. And now if I expand that data column, click OK, we now have a data set that we can work with. So I'll select name, item size, go to transform, unpivot columns, unpivot other columns, and there we go. A small amount of tidy up. We've now got a really clean data set that we can use. Now we might be dealing with a different file format, which also has these nested tables, a PDF, for example. So let's take a look at that as an example. I'll right click, go to new query, file, and then select PDF. I've got a PDF file saved here. So I'll select that and click import. Again, I'll select the entire file and then click OK. Now here the PDF has recognized that we have pages and we have tables. If we select the data for one of those, you can see the preview of the data there at the bottom. It's the same as we had for our Excel workbook. I'm just going to filter this so it just includes the page data. Then I'll click OK. What we need to do first is to promote our headers. Now I'm not particularly good at remembering ENCODE and the syntax that we need to follow. So what we're going to do in this video is use some syntax stealing. We're going to use different transformations and then put them together to get the result that we want. So the first thing we want to do is to understand what the code is for promoting a header. To do that, I'm just going to click use first row as headers. It's given us a change to type step, we don't need that but we'll click on promoted headers, and that is the code that we need to promote a header. I'm going to copy that 
and then we can delete that step. Next, we want the code that we need to transform a column. So I'm going to pick the kind column, then from the transform ribbon, I'll go to extract and let's just select first characters. In there, I'll enter two and click OK. So that gives us the code as to how we transform a column. So table, transform columns, filtered rows was the name of the previous step. It then has the name of the column that we want to transform. Well, we actually want to transform the data column. And then we have the function that we want to perform on that column. So we used text.start as our kind of placeholder. We're going to paste the table.promote headers function. At the time that we had the table.promote headers, the step that we had was filtered rows. Well, we don't want to promote our filtered rows step. We want to promote the table inside each of these columns. So we're going to replace that with an underscore. Then finally, we have the output and we want the output to be a table. So let me commit that. Right, let's have a look inside each of these tables. And you can see we have promoted headers for each of these tables, which means I'm going to remove the ID and the kind. So we, so we will retain the name. We can expand that column, click OK. Again, we now have a data set that we can use. So name, item, and size, transform, unpivot columns, unpivot other columns. Fantastic, we now have a well-formed data set. And that's it, that's how we can promote headers before we expand the column. It makes our lives so much simpler. Now, one other technique that you might want to use is that when we expand those columns, that that function will hard code those column names as it expands those columns. So what you might need to do is to look at a method that dynamically expands those column names so that those column names are not hard coded. And I've got a post about that and you'll find a link on the screen now. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. Also go and check out our Excel training academy over at excelofthegrid.com forward slash academy where you can take your Excel skills to the next level. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.